All right, praise the Lord. It's good to be with you this morning in the presence of the Lord. Um, God is good. God is faithful. I know that uh, with everything, the craziness that's going on in this world today and the things that are happening, I know that God is still faithful. He is still in control of all things. He has power over all things. His love is still greater than sin. The last time I checked, Bishop, can you? Can amen. You, amen. All right, thank you for that. Praise the Lord. It is good to be with you today. Like I said, um, we got some prayer requests. I know we have our pastor and his wife are home. They have they tested positive with COVID. Um, pray for the Wallace family. You know, Brother Wallace, Brother Arville Wallace is um, going to be greatly missed. So we're going to pray for God's peace in their family. And we're going to pray for God's direction for God to just continue to bless them and keep them. And pray for God's grace. If it wasn't for God's grace, right? If it wasn't for God's grace... I know that I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you today, you know, just the quick things and you know, a couple times that I tried to commit suicide, the car accidents, I know we were just went to Florida, or Florida, <laughs> we're not went to Florida, we went to Ohio just recently and I know all the times that the Lord just had his hand upon the, my wheel or the wheel of cars around us that he's just kept us so many times and the things that he has kept us from that we are not even aware of that he has kept us from, Amen. Praise God. So if you don't mind this morning, I don't know if you had a chance yet to, to surrender completely by just closing your eyes and lifting your hands. I don't know if you had a chance to do that. If you had a chance to ask God to forgive you today and you don't have to walk around with your eyes closed and your hands lifted. Or you could just stay seated where you're at, Bishop. <laughs> but if you just want to take a moment this morning and just and just praise the Lord with me and magnify the Lord with me this morning and exalt his holy name we we praise you and magnify you Lord we bless you today Lord we thank you for your grace that is sufficient for any season for any trial for any situation I thank you Lord for your hand that is upon us today I'm grateful to you today Lord that you are in control of all things and that your love is still greater than any sin today Lord in the name of Jesus Lord I confess and I believe with and I declare with everything within me Lord that you are high and lifted up and that your name is above every other name and that everything is under your feet today, Father. In the name of Jesus, we magnify and bless you today, Lord. We ask for your presence in our lives. We pray for your grace today and for the lives of those of us souls in this earth today, that we would have your grace, that we would be able to forgive you, others, and ourselves, that we would have your grace today, Lord, that we would not harbor bitterness, that we would not hold on to grudges in the name of Jesus, that we would release any resentment and anger today in the name of Jesus. Lord, and would you forgive us? Would you forgive yes. us of our sin today? Would you forgive me of the iniquity in my life today? Would you search us and cleanse us and wash us today with the water of the word of God? In the name of Jesus, Lord, and we receive by faith right now all of the elements of the armor of God for our protection. Lord, that we are girded about our loins with the belt of truth, that we are fit with the breastplate of righteousness. The helmet of salvation is upon our heads right now, Lord, and our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of the peace, that we are equipped with the shield of faith and armed with the sword of the Spirit. We plead the blood of Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus. We lift up Pastor and Sister Evans. We're asking, Lord, that they would be healed according to their faith and according to your will. We command the, the virus, we command all sickness and disease to be cast into the pit of hell. We loose the healing virtue of Christ. Lord, to go touch this family, Lord. We pray for the Wallace family. We, Lord, we pray for your perfect peace to have dominion in their hearts and minds right now, Lord. Lord, that they would be overcome by your perfect love, that perfect love that casts out fear in the name of Jesus. We pray for there to be a spirit of prayer upon the body of Christ. Lord, that we would be baptized with the spirit of a sound mind, that our hearts and our minds would be stayed upon you, Lord, that the fruit of our lips would be praise and thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Lord, as I feel your spirit today, Lord, as I feel your peace and your love right now, Lord, that the body, that we would be blessed with a double portion of your strength and stamina, that we would be blessed with a double portion of your Holy Spirit today, Lord. Let your Spirit be poured out upon all flesh. We loose the spirit of the fear of the Lord. We loose the will of God into all the ends of the earth right now. In the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of darkness. We come against every lying, deceiving spirit. We loose the spirit of truth right now, that we would not be deceived, that we would not believe a lie. In the name of Jesus, glory to God hallelujah you are great lord and you are greatly to be praised if somebody wants to give a shout of praise to god if you want to clap your hands unto god oh glory yes lord you are holy god you are worthy lord you are faithful god i thank you lord 
I bless you today, Lord. Oh, I exalt you today, Lord. Oh, I magnify you. Hallelujah. Oh, you are so good, Lord. You are so faithful, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody, uh, just by showing of hands, anybody have a praise report? You just got a, an answered prayer this week. God has kept you. God has protected you. God has done something great in your life. I know that, is anybody waiting for an answer from God for something? Anybody waiting for an answer? Hallelujah. You know, we, uh, we tend to let our minds go sometimes when we're searching for direction and instruction. We kind of, you know, I know my wife, she'll, she'll agree with this, that she tries to help God sometimes. Oh, yes. All the time. She, uh, all the time, not just sometimes, all the time. She, uh, you know, she kind of thinks that she's going to help God out and she's going to help him with some, you know, direction and instruction and some wisdom and knowledge and... Uh, you know, <laughs> but if there is anywhere, any source for us to go to for any answer, for any direction, for any instruction, it's just calling out to him. It doesn't matter what I think I know. You know what? Anything that I think I know anyways comes from him. I mean, I, I don't always know what the next door that's going to open. Right. I don't always know that, you know, that path that we talk about, that, that straight and narrow path, I, I can't always see ahead, though. I don't always know what's ahead the ne tomorrow. So like his word says, I don't need to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to take care of itself. Yeah. He's, all, he's the God, you know what it talks about, he, you know, he's the God of all times. He, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it's the same God that I served, well, I don't want to say served, the same God that I praised and magnified and had faith in yesterday right. is the same God that I need to praise and magnify and have faith in today and not worry about tomorrow because you know what? He's not worried about tomorrow. Right. He's concerned about uh, loving me today. He's right. concerned about loving his creation today. He's concerned about delivering and saving and, and, and strengthening and healing and, 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 and instructing and directing his creation today. He's not worried about tomorrow because he's the same God tomorrow. Right. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I don't have to worry about the next five minutes. If I could just praise and magnify, mag magnify God in this moment, in this time, if I could just surrender to him and let him be God and let me just be the creation. Yes. Yes. Right, and let him shape and mold and direct and instruct and do all that good stuff, right? Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So we're having our... Com kind of combined care group here. We're kind of going live. We're, we just got it all jumbled up into one thing this morning. Um, and I don't know why I'm talking so much with my hands today. So <laughs> Facebook is probably like, what is he doing? <laughs> because my, you know, for all these years, we thought we had a little bit of Italian in us. And my sister, my sister Nicole, actually had that DNA test done. We have no Italian, I don't think. <laughs> Well, it's kind of vague. It says like Northern Europe and Southern Europe and Eastern and all these different, you know. So there might be a little bit of Italian. So I don't know. What, I guess I got a little bit of the Italian. We got, we got more, we got more Portuguese than was Nick, Nikki does, anyways. I don't know if that comes from her dad or what, but yeah. So all my <laughs> there was a group text going. I'm sorry to share this with you, but I just think it's kind of funny because all the, then my sister said there's like no Italian in us, and my mom's like, oh, I don't believe it, <laughs> you know. We had that, that group text going. <laughs> but so we're going to so we're going to talk today about um that spaghetti went downhill. Yeah. Where'd you get that recipe? Yeah. Um is this Chef Boy RD? Yeah. I know I know better than that. It was yeah. not it was not it was not Chef It was not Chef Boy RD. We all love the spaghetti. Every, you know, everybody came over all the time for dinner. You know, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> now everybody wants to be dismissed and go get spaghetti. Um, so we're talking, we're talking this morning about living is growing. And if I'm, if I'm living for the Lord, if I'm trying to submit to his will, if I'm trying to just completely yield to him and allow him to have his way in my life, then I'm going to be growing spiritually. Okay. So the purpose of this lesson today is to alleviate frustration. Is anybody frustrated? 
we got a little bit of, we got some people that are being honest. We can tell by some of our faces at times where, you know, <laughs> alleviate frustration in, in our members by showing that living for God is, is a growth process. I know that's, we, talk, we hear Bishop talk, he talks about process a lot. It's part of the process, and then it's process, right? Um, so the process of whatever it might be, we go, you know, how many processes, you know, those of us that work in the plants, you've got to follow certain procedures, we have a certain, this process, and in this process, you know, okay, so a lot of the head shaking because we know, you know, chemical plants and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, and I was remembering this morning, it was funny, another thing just kind of clicked in my head this morning while I was getting ready for to be here this morning with you that I remember when I first got in the church and we were going to a men's retreat and I would think about all the different things that we we got involved in we went we took the kids to you know, we went to uh youth con youth uh youth rallies and of course that was a lot young you know I was a lot younger then and we had the uh the youth rally and then at, right after we had this big volleyball basketball place and they were doing all kinds of stuff and I was out there running around. I couldn't do that today, you know, because I, you know, I barely could walk up the stairs at work without feeling all winded and tired. I'm like, oh, my Lord, what is going on? But that's part of my own fault, not just my age, but just because I'm kind of not that active in doing those sports things anymore. But I remember those things, you know, talking about living is growing and, and living, living for the Lord and trying to be the thing, that the man and, and, and being the man and women that God wants us to be, we... If we get involved in the things that God's involved in, that's how we grow. Yeah. Amen. If we get, if we read His right. Word, right. God's involved in His Word. Right. If I, I get, if I get involved, then I'm going to be growing. Okay. If I live in His Word, I'm going to be growing. Right. I get in, involved in, a, in in prayer each day. Right. God is involved in our prayers. Right. I think some of us think that when we go to prayer, that we're just the only ones there talking. Are we, anybody hear that? Do you feel like that sometimes when you get into your prayer, in your prayer closet, you feel like you're the only one that's talking? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because, yeah, that, maybe you are the only one that's talking. Maybe we haven't given God a chance to speak. Right. Prayer is not always blah, 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 blah. I'm just talking, talking, talking. And, mag and what I, I understand we do need to talk. We need to voice it out. I can't, my prayer can't be... It can't, that, that can't be prayer. I understand there's times where we might be in a situation, it might be at work or you might be in line, or whatever it might be. You might be in a, a crowd and you just can't be praising and magnifying God and talking out loud. That might be your prayer just inside of you. Maybe it's somebody close you just don't want them to hear because you're just trying to lift them up to God. But prayer, God is involved in our, in our prayer lives. Amen. If we give God a moment to speak, that God will speak in our prayer lives. So this is... Living in, is growing. So we got that, that, uh, that our prayer lives are you know, alive and active. Amen? Amen? So introductory verse, if you want to look to 1 Peter. If somebody wants to read that, 1 Peter 2 and 2. If somebody wouldn't mind reading that while I get a little sip of water here. Praise God. 1 Peter 2 and 2. You can just start reading as soon as you get it. That'd be great. They can't see you on Facebook Live. They probably won't even be able to hear you, but that's okay. As a newborn baby desires the sincere milk of the word that they may grow thereby. Amen. So regardless of our natural age, when we first come to God, we are all new babies. Right. Okay, we're all new babies in the Lord. It doesn't matter how old you are. So I was, uh, what was it, 26 when I first came to the Lord, so... I was a new baby, right? If it's your first time here, your first you know, time you want to have a, a relationship with God, then we're going to consider, consider you a new baby in the Lord, right? And there's steps, right? You, anybody who has kids in here, okay? You have kids, you know, they, what do they do? They, first they're just laying there, you're just like, okay, you know, that's all you're going to do because that's all they can do, right? They're just going to lay there. Mm. Picked up and held and carried around and fed and clean, you know, all these things. After a while, so after a while, you know, the baby, you know, starts rolling over maybe, starts rolling onto its belly, starts crawling, you know, doing that sniper crawl like they're going through the weeds of the jungle. It's okay to laugh today too. Um, after a while, then he starts sitting up and they, then they start 
pulling themselves up on the side of a table and standing there. And I remember we had uh, this one commercial that used to come on TV when Brianna first started walk, trying to walk, and she'd be standing up at that table, and that, that music to that commercial would come on, and she'd, her rear end would start going, and she, she would start bouncing around, you know. Still does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're all new babies in a spiritual sense. Therefore, we must grow. We must grow. I could I can't I can't stay I couldn't have stayed when I first came to the Lord. I couldn't have stayed there spiritually. I couldn't have stayed in that same state. I've got to I've got to have a prayer, you know, prayer walk. I've got to have that time that I spend each day in prayer. I've got to spend time each day reading and studying the word of God and applying. Okay, there's one thing with reading the word and just reading it. Right. We've got to read the word and we've got to digest that word. We've got to accept it. I've got to accept the word of God as true. I've got to apply that word to my life. I've got to pray, Lord, let your word be manifest in me. Let your word be established in me, right? Praise God. So we've got to grow. Peter, like I said, Peter calls us newborn babies. Thank God when new people come into the church, we don't have to change diapers physically. Thank God for that. I do not miss those days. I have people, you know, when they have the new babies and whatnot, and I'm like, oh, I do not miss those days of cleaning rear ends and dirty diapers and, you know, because I, I got a, you know, I got a weak stomach as it is. You know, there were times where I opened that diaper and I was like, oh, whoa, you know, I don't, you know, don't want to see that. Um, so newborn, newborn babies. So we have, this desire implies that we must, we want to, that we must want to grow. There's things that we desire in life, right? We desire certain things. You know, I, I desire to have that closeness with God. I desire to have that relationship with God that, you know, that's part of my prayer at times. Lord, help me to have that relationship with you that you want to have with me. Help me, you know, the things like I pray about being a husband and a dad. Lord, help me to be the husband that I need to be. Help me to be the dad because I can't do it. I don't know how to do these things. Help me to be the employee. Help me to be the co-worker. Help me to be the neighbor that I need to be. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we, we just want to be at home and, you know, I, was, I kind of chuckled the, the other day. Our neighbor, my wife was coming home from the store and she had some groceries she was getting out. So I went out and then we see across the street, the guy across the street is trying to get this box or crate like sort of into his front door and so she you should go over and help you know first we're like yeah, i don't want to go do anything i'm helping you carry groceries in i don't even want to do that <laughs> i'm kidding i'm not gonna make my wife carry all the groceries in by herself just most of them the heavy stuff i'm just kidding so i was like all right i'll go over and help not knowing it was a 500 and some pound gun safe he was trying to get into his house <laughs> And he, <laughs> I was ready for just like, you know, because he's a little bit older. I was like, I'll go help, you know, I don't have no problem helping, you know. Like, oh my Lord, I didn't eat my Wheaties today. <laughs> but so it was fun. It was a really long process. It was a process getting that safe into the house. Trying to make heaven our home is a process. Just getting through today is going to be a process. Lord, I need to submit to you. Lord, help me to submit to you. What do we, you know, it's okay to ask God for his help. You know, we pray for, you know, the light bill, we, the car bill, you know, this the, and the, the insurance and the health and all these things. And so, just help me to be your son, your son today, Lord. Help me to be obedient to your word today. Help me to be completely sold out to you today. Right. Yes. Praise God. Natural growth is basically automatic. Now, I, you know, hit my certain peak, you know, four foot, five foot two, five foot nothing, you know. Um, so there wasn't, there, there wasn't that much growing. Man, you're tall. Yeah. Sixth grade. <laughs> we went, <laughs> we went, uh. We go to the doctor the other day, and they do the height and weight. And I'm, the lady did, uh, she did Bubba's height and weight. She just did my weight, and she just asked me, how tall are you? I was like, well, he was 5'3 already, so I was like, ah, 5'2. Because 
Because if I would have been like five, four, so you're lying. He's taller than you, and he's hunched over. He's hunched over. So natural growth. Five, three, eight. I think I had that on my driver's license for a while, like five, three. <laughs> you're being very generous to yourself. <laughs> so. If we want to continue breathing and stay healthy, you know, if we continue breathing and stay healthy, we will grow. Okay? This is not the case in the spiritual realm. We will not grow spiritually unless we really want to. We've got to have a desire to grow spiritually. You know, I could pray and pray all day. Lord, I just pray, help me to grow and mature spiritually. But I've got to put, I've got to be, living is growing, so I've got to be active. I've got to be active in the word. I've got to be active in prayer. I've got to be active in, you know, whatever it might be. It might be, you know what, I'm going to go to a youth rally. I'm going to go to a men's conference. I'm going to go to a prayer meeting. I'm going to go to whatever it might, men's breakfast or ladies' prayer breakfast, whatever it might be. Amen? Amen. Getting active in something, being, you know, sharing our testimony. That's being, that's being active in the word of God because I, I really believe that when we start sharing our testimony, that, that's the word of God made, made alive. Because we're glorifying and mag- Look what God did for me. God healed me of this. I should not even be here. God's grace has kept me. And that's why I'm here today. Amen. It takes the word of God to grow spiritually. I can't grow without the word of God. I cannot grow. You know, some people I pray, you know, I don't need the word. You know, or I I read the word in my prayer like blah. I've got to put all these things together. I've got to have the word of God. I've got to have uh I've got to have prayer. I've got to have um I've got to have faith. You know, I've got to you know, I've got to put my my hope in him, my trust in him. We watched something the other day about, you know, trusting in God. Trusting that he is God. Trusting that he he it's crazy what we're li- the, today when I first got in the church, if you would have said, hey, this is what life is going to be like so many years down the road. I'm mean, not saying that I wouldn't have gotten in the church. I'm just saying that you, we don't think, wow, how, we would have never thought we'd be in a situation like we're in back then today, 20 some years ago. But the, the thing is, I've got to have the same faith in God as when I believe that he was delivering me from drugs and alcohol and saving me from suicidal thoughts and tendencies. It's the same God that delivered me of depression that's going to keep me in a world that's going crazy and berserk today. God has not changed. We change and the world changes and and it's just more evil and there's more hate and there's more prejudice and there's more, you know, whatever it is. But God has not changed. God is love. God is powerful. God is God is sovereign. He is sovereign. He still sits upon the same throne. He has not given. He has not relinquished his throne to the enemy. He has not given up. He has not thrown in the towel. Praise God. Amen. And if we get to a point, we get to a place in our lives where we think, you know what, I'm just going to throw in the towel. There's no point in fighting. You can't believe that lie. You just got to keep right. put in your boot heels and say, you know what? No, that is just a lie that the enemy wants to m- me to believe so that I would give up, so that I would just throw in the towel, so that I would just completely surrender to the things of the I can't do that. I got to stay submitted to God. Yeah. I've got to be obedient to God. When it feels like I'm getting my teeth knocked in, I just got to say, you know what? My teeth are getting knocked in at this moment for a reason. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, if I'm supposed to sit here and allow my teeth to get knocked in for a moment I know that the season is going to change I know that there is victory in the name of Jesus when I plead the blood in the morning when I plead the blood when I'm asking the Lord's hedge of protection I know that nothing can penetrate that hedge of protection unless God allows it nothing if you don't believe that read the story of Job The Lord allowed so much. And then there was a line, trust me. The same there was that line was for Job, that there's still a line for us where God says, Hey, enemy, that's as far as you could go. And you want to believe that the enemy has to be obedient to that. 
Because the enemy of our soul is not the one who created heaven and earth. And his name isn't above every other name. Right. My heavenly father, Jesus, his name is above every other name. Yeah. And everything is under his feet. Right. And you know what? Everything is under our heavenly father's feet. And those feet are on the church body. Yeah. Those feet are on the body of Christ. And he has given us those feet to walk upon and tread upon serpents and scorpions. And I don't have to worry. I don't have to fear. So it takes the word of God to grow spiritually. The word gives us knowledge. It is our spiritual food. Growth is affected primarily by our diligence in seeking to know our Father and His plans for our lives. What does the word say? That He is, the Lord is, and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek after Him. Okay, maybe something's going on in your life and you're just like, well, that just doesn't seem like it applies to my life. I've been seeking after the What have you been seeking them after the, for? So many, here's where we, this is always the thing, right? This is always, when we think of rewarder, right? We think of rewarder. The reward is when I diligently seek after him, I'm going to find him. That's the reward. I'm going to find him. Right. And you know what? If I find him, you know what? It goes back to that scripture. Seek after, the, seek after him, his kingdom and his righteousness. Yes. And all these things will be added unto you. That, that goes right hand in hand with he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek after him. When I find him, I find everything. Yes. When I find him, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not lacking anything. Right? Amen. When your kids come to you, you want to provide for them in any way you can. You want to heal them. You want to protect them. You want to save, right? Amen. How much greater our Heavenly Father? How much more, more you know, how, that perfect love that He has? Right. You know? I don't, that perfect love is still, it's in that process of being perfected in us, right? right. Because we're, we've never, we're not, we haven't reached that place. We're not perfect. We haven't reached that place of that perfect love. You know, and like I said, it's part of my prayer all the time. Lord, help me to love my wife with the love that you have for the body, that you, have, you gave your life for the body. Help me to love my wife that way. Trust me. And she'll, amen. I'm not there. Working on it. But I'm not there. So Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, and 30. Let's check that out real quick. It says we must learn in order to grow. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, and 30. Uh, let's see. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth... Am I in the right scripture? Matthew 11, 28 and 30. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. I started at 26 for some reason. Okay. My bad. See? I'm not perfect. See, it's a process. Perfection is... You're the deluxe. I'm the deluxe? Yeah. What? Come unto me, all ye that labor. There we go. And are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh. Oh. You ever just been in prayer and the Lord's like just giving you rest in that moment, that time of prayer? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sometimes we think it's hard living for the Lord, right? We think, you know, why is it hard? Why do we think it's hard living for the Lord? Because we're putting on our own, we're putting on that yoke that isn't of the Lord. Right. We're trying to take on those burdens that the Lord says, you know, I, every, no, no, be yoked up with me. My yoke is easy. Why is his yoke easy? Because it's his. His yoke. Not mine, not the one I want to pick up and put on. My burden is light. 
Why is his burden light? His, his, his yoke, his burden. We get so weighed down because we try to figure everything out. We try to carry it, the load by ourselves. We, we try to whatever, and that's the problem. We, I, 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 right? Amen. Amen. We must learn in order to grow. As we learn to know Jesus and accept the yoke of his will for our lives, we will find deeper and greater peace for the innermost part of our being. We get yoked up with him. Right. He gives us that peace. Right. Yeah. That peace that just surpasses all understanding. I'm telling you, if you've never experienced the peace of God, you've got to get into his yoke. Yeah. Right. You've got to get into his yoke and you've got to get into your prayer closet and ask him, yes. Lord, that your peace would have dominion in my heart and in my mind. Yes. Because I'm telling you, you could go through the worst trial, you could go through the worst storm, and if God's peace, and it's God's peace that doesn't wipe everything clear to where everything, nothing's wrong, no, it's God's peace that when you're walking through the storm, and it seems like everything is turned upside down, and everything's just falling on top of you, and you're buried under so much, it's that peace of God when you're in His yoke, and it just seems like, you know what? I don't have a care in the world. Yeah. I, you know, and I, and it, I the first experienced this is whenever Sam got cancer and the Lord's peace. Somebody needs God's peace right now. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to tell you how hard it is when the doctors say your, your child might not make it. The child that God said, hey, we were ready not to have any more kids. And God said, hey, I'm going to give you another. And now, the Lord, he's got cancer. And God says, don't worry. I'm giving you my peace. Yeah. Yeah. His peace will see you through any situation. His peace. There were days where I felt bad. I had felt so much peace. And so much of God's grace. And I felt so good. I was not worried about him. When all these other kids are dying around us. And going through all the, the pain and suffering around us. And I felt good. I had to pray. Lord I feel guilty. He's like that's my peace. There's no guilt. There's no shame. Yeah you're going to have hurt. You're going to have pains. But. There's no guilt and there's no shame where accepting God's peace and accepting God's grace to where you're in a situation and you, you start to feel like, how can I feel so good? Don't turn that off. Don't shun that and say, I got to take on. No, no. You just continue in God's grace and peace and don't worry about what the, everybody or the world, you shouldn't be like this. No, no. God says I should be like this. I, sh I should be like this. When a situation hits, when a trial hits, when a pandemic hits, I still should be able to have peace and grace and mercy and love and, and not have to worry and not have fear and not have doubt. Hallelujah. His grace and peace and love and mercy, his, his joy. How can I have joy in a time like this? Hallelujah. In his presence. There is fullness of joy. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. Those two scriptures go hand in hand. And I believe those so strongly that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. How do I get strength to make it? I've got to get in his presence. I've got to get in his presence and I've got to receive the joy of the Lord. Then now that joy becomes my strength for the day that I'm going to face, for the situation that I'm going to be in. I have the joy of the Lord. I have the strength of the almighty God, the holy one of Israel, the one who spoke into all creation. He spoke light into all darkness. We got darkness all around us. And you know what? Sometimes the light that he speaks is when he moves us into a place. 
We might not like that. We might not even agree with it. We might not be comfortable with that. But sometimes when we're like, Lord, I speak light into this area, in this situation, into this household. I speak light into this place of work, whatever it might be. And then all of a sudden God moves us there. And then we're like, oh, uh, so I guess I'm that light. Now we're like, oh, and God's like, hey, I got you're in my if you're in my yoke. You got grace, peace, mercy, you got strength, you got joy, you got love, you got the armor of God, you got the sword of the spirit, you got the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're my feet are on the church body. Right. He's like, you are lacking nothing. You have all power and authority that I give you. Oh. It ain't you. Yeah. It ain't me. Right. Amen. People are drawn to you. People get drawn to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the light of God that is in us. That is the power and the authority that people are submitting to. And they... Not that there's people are submitting to us, but they're submitting to the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost that resides in spirit-filled believers. Right. And we're like, why are these people attracted to me? I don't want people to be attracted to me. I want to be selfish today, right? And God's like, no, no. That's not what I called you to. They're drawn to you. And some of y'all ladies, you think, well, I walk into the store and they, they notice me. They're noticing the light of God. Right. People in the world want to hide. Right. They want to hide the grace of God. People in the world want to, want to hide the perfect love of God. People, right. I'm not going to go any yeah. further into, into, into any more explanation on that. Let God speak to you on that. People are changing genders today because they're trying to hide the grace of God. They're trying to hide the holiness of God. People are saying that they're confused. There's no confusion when God's involved. He is not the author of confusion. The enemy brings confusion. We start buying into that lie. And we start saying that God is wrong by making me like this. No, God is not wrong. He has never been wrong. He never will be wrong. Hallelujah. Oh, we lose the spirit of truth right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that we would not be deceived, that we would not believe a lie in the name of Jesus. Oh, so the knowledge of God and accept, acceptance of his authority in our lives will produce the confidence and security that is absolutely essential for our growth. That authority, we've got to accept the authority of God. Praise the Lord. We've, <laughs> pray, pray with authority. Right. You know, we don't have to be whining and, oh, Jesus, ah, help me. We don't have to pray like that. Hopefully you don't pray like that. I don't pray like that. Oh, Jesus, help me. No. Right now, in the name of Jesus, sometimes you've got to get a hold of your own self. I command every thought, imagination, and idea to be taken captive into the obedience of Jesus Christ. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. We all experience a period of adjustment when we first come to God. It's a period of adjustment. You know, you have to start, okay, I need to read, I need to pray, I, I, you know, I want to read, I want to pray, I've got to do these things, I need to be at the church house, I want, I want to be active, I want to be involved in, in His kingdom. Right. I need to uh, share my testimony, share with coworkers, share with neighbors, share with friends, share, the, share these things that God is, you might, we hear so many people complaining all the time, don't we? People... Seems like that's all you hear most of the time. You know, people's just complaining. I'm at work and people are complaining because they got to work. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so we're at work. We have to work and we don't get paid. If we don't load these trucks, if we don't load these rail cars, Dow doesn't make money. The people are like so happy when something gets rejected. Ah, oh, we had to reject this truck. We had to reject that rail car. We can't do this. We can't do that now. Well, yeah, I'm like, hold on. That's money just not being made. 
We've got to do this. We, this is what we've got to do. We just can't sit here and come to work and get a paycheck if we're not doing anything. I've got to be involved in his kingdom. I'm not going to grow and mature spiritually if I don't pray, if I don't read the word. If I don't have that relationship, if I don't have that fellowship and that communion with him. My marriage is not going to grow if I don't talk to my wife on a daily basis. If I don't love on her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Let's get back into this. I've got... <laughs> Oh, well, Lord, we brought with us. What did we bring to the Lord when we came to him? I'll tell you what, I brought a bunch of garbage. I know if someone came to my house and they brought garbage bags, I'd be like, you must well go back out because you ain't coming in here. God says, come on. No, you left some other stuff that you're trying to keep for later. No, bring all of it. Bring all of it. And you know what? Sometimes... There's those things that are deep down. And once again, to talk about that process to where God does some healing on day one. He knows how much healing you're ready for, too. Yeah. If God's like, hey, I really want you to give me that part, too. If he's asking, he knows it's the perfect time. Right. Yeah. He knows. He is a heavenly father that is a caring, loving, compassionate heavenly father. He knows the perfect time. So as we gradually change to become more like Jesus would, would have us to be, let that be part of your prayer life. Lord, help me to become what you want me to be. We find that our natural mind resists some of these changes, right? We don't, we want to, ah, I, I don't like change. I don't like change at all. When stuff gets changed at work, <clears throat> I don't like this change. Things change. Things have been changing around us really crazy, you know, the past few years. A lot of change. We might not like it, but you know what? When, God, when God's asking us and he's taking us in a direction, then we're like, ah, this is change. Ah, I don't like this. This isn't comfortable. Lord, help me. I need to submit. I need to be obedient. I need to conform to your will. Right. I don't need to conform to the, to the standards and the things that are taking place in this world. I need to conform to God's will. Amen? Amen. Would somebody mind uh, grabbing 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5? If you, you can just read it when you get it. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. So he's going ha- he's gonna to help us to gradually change. Yes. Just as I talked about healing, he's going to help us in our growth process too. He's going to help us to grow and mature spiritually. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. Oh, Brother Jesse, how do you even see those words on those pages? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> you might need a magnifying glass also. And a telescope. Anybody? I wasn't just, I wasn't just calling you out to read it. Anybody else has it? Go ahead, sir. Praise God. So, as we feed our minds on the Word of God, the Spirit of God will use the Word like a sword to slay the lies and suggestions of the natural man, putting to silence every illogical, unreasonable, and untrue idea that enters our minds. So, once again, it goes back to that, you know, praying, Lord, baptize me with the spirit of a sound mind. You know, fill me, Lord, with the mind of Christ that I would clearly comprehend and communicate truth. It's okay to ask to have the mind of Christ. Right. I'm not saying, Lord, make me as smart as you are in everything and about everything and help me to know everything. I'm not asking that. I'm asking for your wisdom 
for decisions that I need to make each day. Right. I'm asking that I would have the mind of Christ so that I would just be able to clearly comprehend and communicate truth. That there would be no lies coming from me. That I would, whenever, some, whenever a lie would pop up, that I would, hey, uh, I'd be quickened by the Holy Ghost. And no, that, that's, un, that's not true. That's just a lie from the pits of hell. If we have that relationship, we have that walk with God and we're growing with God, we, we could get to a place where the Holy Ghost just quickens us. Yes. You ever about to do something and, uh, no, I can't, I, the Holy Ghost quickens you? Yeah. Or you ever did something and, you know, or, or maybe the Holy Ghost quickened you, then you just did it anyways, and then the Holy Ghost quick, you know, quickens you right after too? But the Holy Ghost, God doesn't come at you and start beating you down. God's just like, hey, you messed up. But you know what? I'm still God and I'm still here and I still love you the same. Yes, yes. But we start thinking right away after we messed up and the enemy starts putting thoughts into our mind, right? We start working on these things and then we start, oh, God's mad at me. God hates me. I can't get into God's presence now. I'm, you know, look at me. I'm horrible. I'm just going to go get in my miry clay again and just wallow. In my self-pity. We need to run to God instead of running away from God. Right. Praise God. Right. So, uh, where are we at here? It is important that we understand that our Christian life will progress in a manner similar to a child learning to walk. When your kids were learning to walk and they fell down, what did you do? You didn't go over and yell at them. Hopefully you didn't. <laughs> what are you doing? You can't even walk yet? No, we didn't do that. You tried to take one step. You can't even do that. No, we didn't do that. They fell down and we went over and we helped them up. Or we just watched and said, oh, wait a minute. Let's see what they're going to, you know, they're going to get up. You know, because they, they start about, they look around, they sit, then they see you like paying attention. Oh, <laughs> but if you're not paying attention, they're just like, whatever. <laughs> you know, then all of a sudden somebody pays attention. Oh, <laughs> then the tears start and the walk, and then they look up. <laughs> right? It happens. I don't know, but you showed all of our kids how to chew with their mouth open. I know that. <laughs> if, you, if you're ever trying to teach your kids to chew with their mouth closed, don't go out to eat with Bishop. <laughs> He'll be over across the table now. <laughs> Showing... Seafood. I didn't like. We didn't come to a seafood place, <laughs> but I can see your food. <laughs> I forgive you, cause I got God's grace. <laughs> I can't do it on my own, right? You have a hard time forgiving somebody. You can't do it on your own. You gotta have God's grace. You gotta have God's grace. Um. So learning to walk without falling does not happen overnight. So like with our kids, physically learning how to walk, it doesn't happen overnight. It's, it's a process. It goes back to that process thing. So me and you learning how to walk with God each day, it's just going to, there's going to be times where we stumble and fall and we trip up and we maybe bang our head on the table. You know, we got to, and we look, <laughs> we look up to God. <laughs> He's like, hey, I give you all that you need. You gotta trust. Yeah, true. You gotta trust. Yeah. Yield all to me. Cast your, you know the word. His word is awesome. His word is amazing. His word is powerful. His his word holds the answers to all the questions that we have in life. Right. Cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. He's saying, hey. Cast all your cares, all your bur everything on me because I care for you and I'm going to help you. That's great. You like it? She likes it. She likes God. It's true. A baby must first learn to sit up, not spit up. That comes, that's just like day one, spitting up. <laughs> no, baby, a baby must learn to sit up first before they walk. They're going to have to learn to sit up. Then you got the, Then they start pulling themselves up and they start standing, right? They start standing, then all of a sudden you, they're standing there, they let go, and 
looking around once again, and then all of a sudden, everybody on the other side, come on, come on, come on. right? <laughs> get the camera, get the camera. <laughs> Scared the baby half to death running around trying to get a camera and whatever else. <laughs> what are these crazies doing? Come here, come here, look, look, they're about to walk. <laughs> Thank God we don't do that in the church. Like we got a new baby up at the altar praying. Come here, come here, come here. The person standing in the big church. Oh, my gosh. What's going on? What kind of church is this? Get the camera. Get the camera. Everybody standing around. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. They said, so you got, the, you got the sitting up. You got the standing. Then you got the walking. And then finally the running. Then... You're like, why did we show them how to walk? <laughs> They're running around the house, tearing it up. <laughs> I remember I'd come home from work, and my wife would be like, I'm so tired, I'm so worn out. She, Brianna would make a little mess, my wife would go clean it. Brianna would make a little mess over here, but my wife would go clean it. I'd be like, why don't you just wait till the end of the day when she's in bed? <laughs> Instead of going and cleaning up everything. Why don't you just wait till the end of the day? We put her in bed. She ain't going to make another mess after you're over here cleaning one. She's over here making a new one. I can't take it. <laughs> but we could have God's grace in that situation too. We could have God's grace in those kind of situations too. Like it is with our, our natural children. We might have uh, new babies in the Lord that we're kind of, they're looking to us. They might call us. They might be looking to us for some... Hey, I want to bounce this off of you. I want to, hey, what do you, how about some spiritual advice for this? And so those things, you know, just as those children in the natural, we, we've got to nurture and, and help build up right. these new babies in the Lord. Encourage them. Pray with them. Pray for them. You know, we, we get into a setting where we're maybe in a prayer meeting. I learned how to pray mostly by hearing other people pray. You, you, you might be in a prayer meeting and somebody might pray a certain thing and you're like, oh, yes, that is something good that I want to add to my arsenal now. Right. If I can say it like that. Right. I've, I'm telling you, I've pulled so many things from Bishop. I've pulled so many things from Sister Smith. I've pulled things from my wife. I've pulled from different people. Different, oh, that is such a good, I never even thought to pray using, you know, pray like that. You know, and other men of God, different, you know, prayer warriors and intercessors that, of course, you're not trying to mimic their in praying in tongues. That's not what I'm saying. Right. You know, when I first got in the church, I had, and I still have it at the house, it's, I have this uh, little folder. And it has, the, you know, the different things, the different handouts. It has the prayer wheel. You know, it has the certain prayers. I have, I have some stuff on my phone even. Bishop writes. You know, the kingdom prayer. I use, I don't, I don't copy it, but I use it as a guideline sometimes when I'm in my prayer and I'm like, oh, there's something else. This, there's, a, there's another part of this. And I, you know, maybe look it up real quick. Ah, oh, yes, that's it. And then I just, you know, then you get into the flow. And as you begin praying in, in your natural tongue, then you let the Holy Ghost come in and you let the power of God sweep over and you just completely surrender to his will and you completely surrender to how he wants to pray. Lord, lead me in prayer right now. Let me pray the things that you want me to pray right now. And just let him have his way. Yes. So, in conclusion this morning, I don't even know what time it is. I put Bishop's phone off. I can't even reach it now. It's so far away. <laughs> Do not expect your spiritual legs to develop overnight. It's not going to happen. Do not become discouraged over the first few mistakes you make. Because you're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Right. Be patient with yourself and allow Jesus to lead you one step at a time. Right? We, we think sometimes we need to be running. Right. And God's like, no, you just need to be taking right. steps. Right. We think we need to be in spiritual warfare. And God's like, just worship me. Yeah. Now there's times where we're like, I just feel like worshiping. And God's like, no, today's the day for battle. Okay? It happens like that sometimes. But there's times where I tell you, 
I felt like I was about to get into spiritual warfare, and God was like, no, I just want you to sit, sit with me. I just want you to sit with me. I'll tell you what, there's times I grabbed a pillow. Lord, if this was you here with me right now, I just hugged on that pillow. I just need, I need, and I'll tell you what. Those times where just God's grace and peace and love just overwhelms you. Those times where you just get into his presence and you just completely cast every care on him. And you've already done, the, you already prayed the things that he wanted you to pray. And all of a sudden now he's just like, I just want to love on you. I just want to love on you like that with that perfect love that you need to have. You need to experience that. If you have never felt that, if you've never gotten to a place of prayer where that has ever, you've got to, you've got to try to get to that place. That place is so awesome. That place is so special. So the word indicates that maturity will come in time. It's going to come in time. Don't beat yourself up. Once we have matured, we will then be able to teach and help others to grow. This is God's will for each of us. Helping, help your brother, help your sister, help your neighbor. Whatever, however it might be, let God give us the direction. Let God give us the instruction on how that is, when it is. So if it's okay with you now, if we could just, if you want to close your eyes again. If you have a need and you want to just raise your hands, lift a hand or both hands to God. If you don't even have a need, you just want to exalt God. You just want to surrender to him this morning. Let's just praise him. Let's just give him thanks right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. We bless you today, Lord. We exalt you. We magnify you today, Lord. I thank you that you are the one true God. You sit upon the throne, and there is none before you, Father, and there will be none after you. I, I love you today, Lord, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the spiritual growth and maturity, Lord, the places you have taken us, Father. I'm grateful, Lord, that you, that you encourage us and that you strengthen us and that you instruct us and you give us the guidance and the direction that we need. I bless you, Father. I love you, Jesus. I can't do this without you, Father. I need your grace. I need your love. I need your mercy. I need your forgiveness today, Lord. Oh, I bless you today, Lord. I pray that you would bless these individuals in this house this morning. I pray for you to bless those members of the Rock Church, that you would strengthen our elders and heal and strengthen those that are battling with COVID right now, those that are battling with sickness and disease, Lord, that they would be healed, that they would be made whole, that they would be encouraged in you, Lord, that they would receive your love and your peace today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. And remember this, God loves you, and God's got grace, and he's got peace for you. Amen. God is for you and not against you. <laughs> to know that, that God is for me and not against me. Woo! That is good. Praise God. And, and Don't forget about Facebook Live this evening at 6 p.m. too. So God bless you all. And I know we got some stuff over there left over maybe, so God bless. Oh. Still food over here.